Welcome to Learning Photography with Duck. Here's your host, Duck. All right, welcome everybody to a Photoshop edition of Learn Photography with Duck. As always, I am your host, Duck. And hopefully you guys are staying cool and not melting like I was earlier today. <laughs> it's, whew. You know, we've had some great weather. It's been cool. And then it flips and says, you know what? You guys are getting too used to that really nice weather. Let me just crank up the heat. So it's it's been uh, it's been a wild ride this summer so far. So hopefully everybody's staying safe, everybody's staying cool, and enjoying yourself. And we lost Bob. We lost Bob. All right, uh, Bill's here, and uh, Max is new. He's joining us. Uh, so welcome, Max. Welcome to the group. Hopefully you get something out of my jabbering for a couple hours. All right. So, like I said, today is the Photoshop edition. Um, but before we get into today's lessons, uh, I just got a, a quick little mention. A um, couple weeks ago, CTPPA did a uh, a workshop with uh, uh, Nathan Locker and Josh Hanna on on senior portrait photography. Now, these guys are phenomenal with what they do. And they literally took us through their entire workflow from beginning to end. Uh, everything from how to set up the lights, how to pose seniors, what to look for, you know, to create their style. Then we went into uh, the second half of the day was editing and also a discussion about their, um, their business part of it. You know, how did they market? Uh, their product, you know, what did they charge, things like that. So it was very, very interesting. Now, of course, if you've ever been to any kind of photography workshop, uh, especially anything that involves flash photography, whether it's in the studio, hey, Bob's back, uh, you know, whether it's been in a studio or whether it's been, you know, off-camera flash, you, you know that things kind of fall through the cracks because you're in a group of, you know, a bunch of other photographers wanting to learn from the instructor. And of course, time is an issue. Uh, equipment resources is an issue. So often what happens is the instructor demonstrates and the attendees just kind of take notes and hope, hope, that they'll remember it later, okay? Fortunately for us, you know, uh, we had two instructors, so we were able to split up into smaller groups, uh, learn from one, then switch, learn from the other. But because it was a full day event, uh, we had an opportunity to actually shoot using their setup. So they walk us through the setups, uh, they let us shoot it, and then towards the end, we had some some downtime before going inside, and it says, okay, we're going to break it down, we're going to strip it, and we're going to let a couple of you take the reins. And it was great because some of the people that were a little bit, you know, unsure, kind of threw them into the fire, walked them through the process, and everybody got a little bit more out of it. However... Most workshops, you're using somebody else's equipment, learning somebody else's technique, and you're you're pretty much led along the way. So what I find, what ends up happening, and it happened to me early on, is I go home and I pull out my own equipment, which doesn't quite match theirs. Uh, you know. Uh, maybe the powers are different. Maybe the uh, the uh, modifiers are different, you know. And of course, the knowledge behind how to use it is also different. So now you try to replicate it using your own equipment, and it's like starting all over again. It's like all that information just goes poof out the head, and you're like, "Damn, I I have no idea what I'm doing." Okay. 
all that just to lead up to what's coming up. <laughs> so we decided, you know what, while the information is still fresh in our heads, uh, we're going to do a review. So this coming Saturday, is it this Saturday? See, I, I don't even know. Yes, this coming uh, Saturday, the 13th, we are going to be uh, reviewing the whole entire process. And what's great is some of us who attended the workshop, uh, you know, are very familiar. Like, for example, I, I went there not necessarily for how to shoot. I went there for instructions on the business side. I wanted to know about their marketing because uh, portrait photography is something that I'm, I'm expanding more and more into. And I wanted to kind of get a sense of how do you market, you know, for uh, senior portraits? How do you market for portraiture in general? So, yeah, I, I, I got a few tips out of the lighting part, but it wasn't my main motivator. All right. So now those of us like myself who understand the lighting, uh, we can now guide the people who, like I mentioned, you know, walk away with all this information. And then when they try to apply it, it's like goes poof. Okay. So we're, we're basically gearing this to people who went to, to the workshop in order to refresh their memories and actually get to use your own equipment uh, and have somebody who understands it kind of guide you. Uh, until it kind of sinks in. But we are also offering it for anybody who wants to attend. All right. And although you may not have the background information from the workshops, you can still learn because there is going to be instruction going on uh, within our own little get together. Okay. So if anybody's interested, you know, spread the word. We're going to be doing off camera flash. You're going to need to bring your own equipment because that's what this is for. It's to how do you, I replicate what was taught with the equipment that I own. All right. And it really isn't all that difficult. Uh, I mean, these guys, they work pretty much bare bones equipment. Um, I can replicate it with an AD 200 or a, um, you know, a strobe, strobe light. All right. Uh, for outdoor stuff, they're actually, you know what, I should probably pull up their work. Uh, give me one second. Uh, zoom browsing. Yes. Oh, no, 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 that's not it. Nathan Loker Photography. Yes. I want to ask you a question about the Yeah, Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, nope, that's not the right, Nathan, okay, hold on a second, where is, search, Nathan Loker. All right, oh, now, oh. Uh, Oh, here it is. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me put this in. And mm -hmm. let me share. All right. So uh, this is Nathan. So Nathan and Josh, they they both have a very similar style. They they love a very dark, moody, cinematic uh, style. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you know, and this is, you know, typical example. And uh, let's see. Hmm. 
you know what that reminds me of duck is instead of the except for the fact this is in color sort of reminds me of old film noir same uh, thinking yeah um it it has very distinctive lighting you know um this isn't the well but but anyway uh yeah it's it's got very distinctive lighting um very uh moody uh lots of use of shadow and mm -hmm. uh you know so it's it's definitely a look it's not for everybody all right uh, it definitely tickled my funny bone because I love, love that dark, moody, you know, uh, type of photography. And something that I don't, you know, like I mentioned before, not something I get to do all the time in my normal work. So, uh, so anyway, uh, that's what we're going to be teaching. If anybody is interested in learning some of this, even though you didn't attend uh you're free to you know join us on saturday it's going to be at hubbard park all right actually let me bring this back so uh you do need to register through ctppa.com all right just go to the events page actually you know right on the home page you'll see a little blurb for it uh it's the dyna dynamic seniors follow-up okay so and it's at hubbard park starting off at 10 30 and we're going to go until you know people decide that they want to quit okay so anyway that's the only thing that i have coming up right now um i have i do have something that i'm working on for august uh which is some of you actually may have done it in the past with me i have a set of um uh, uh it's it's a photo treasure hunt game it's a set of cards and it's a lot of fun. You pick out a card and you have to do whatever the activity on the card says. All right, so that's gonna be scheduled. I don't have a date yet, but it's gonna be in August. And it's more likely, I got one of two locations. It's either gonna be the, the Waterbury Green or somewhere in New Britain. I I haven't been to I've only been to New Britain a couple of times, so I'm not all that familiar with it. But I'm sure there's uh, uh, some little area that is, um, uh, you know, pretty conducive to that type of activity. Oh well, I've been to Walnut Hill. Okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the reason the reason I like the Waterbury, um, uh, downtown Waterbury, is that they have a green. Yeah. And, I know I grew up there. okay, so so you're familiar with. So so within the green, there's eh, nature, okay, yeah, all right. There are bushes, there are trees, there's there are birds, you know, there's squirrels. So there's, there's nature available. Uh, but there's also a lot of, you know, people activity. So you can do street photography. There's a lot of buildings. So you can do architectural photography, um, you know, uh, uh, depending on how, what areas you go, you can do a little bit of like urban landscapes. All right. So there's a broad range of, of the types of photography that you can do, uh, uh, so that way, whatever the cards give you, you have the ability within a short walking distance of completing that activity without saying, yeah, we're in, we're in the wrong spot, you know? So if I could find something like that in New Britain, you know, where there's a, a town green uh, that has, you know, a lot of vegetation and within a walking distance to, you know, shops and, and people walking around, then yeah but I got to take a ride out there and just kind of scope it out or Google street view. <laughs> right. Okay. I haven't spent much time in new on the green in New Britain. I drive through it once in a great while. I think yeah. Waterbury would be better. 
The one thing that's different in Waterbury, they redid the green a whole bunch of years ago, and it was after you, you know, when you had that other group, you did a a, a session on the green. Uh, the telephone lines are underground now, or that's oh. what it looked like to me, which is good because I was taking pictures <laughs> and I was trying to take a picture of the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception and the wires were in the way. And a woman said, oh, great, you're taking a picture of my church, you're taking a picture of my church. So I just took a picture just to humor her. But I, you know, and, and last time I drove through, I thought, I don't think those wires are there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, the nice thing about, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom nowadays, uh, they make removing wires very easy. So, OK. Uh, anyway, uh, does anybody got any activities they want to push? Bill, you got anything? I have nothing. Everybody, everybody is on a hiatus for the summer. Um, the only thing I want to mention, you were saying that uh, your session, you, you taught, you know, you were taught marketing. Would you use Facebook? Like I just verified, I'm still on the Cheshire community Facebook page mm -hmm. and Rick C. Burry, uh, for the rest of you, he's a, uh, a, he does senior portraits. He advertises yeah. on that. He has, he has his personal page and he has a page for his business. He's always pushing on Facebook on both his name yeah. and the photog and, and the business. And then he posts as himself on Cheshire forum mm -hmm. uh a lot of young people do read facebook i mean what i mean by young people people who have kids they're going to be like 40 they're not going to be my age right. so i think facebook is a good uh, any any i think online is more important than mailings or yeah print yeah or... well if all right let let's take a a trip down memory lane because uh max unfortunately is the only young guy here <laughs> but max, max is probably max has probably never listened to am radio <laughs> yeah, probably not <laughs> but anyway we're not going to pick on max too much uh yeah. but let's take a little drive down memory lane and we'll we'll keep this short because i want to get into the lesson but if if we look back before the internet before the internet okay what were our advertising avenues? We had television, we had radio, we had the newspaper, and we had the yellow pages. Pretty much, that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what did all of these things have in common? Mass they, media. They, mass media. So they were a one-to-many uh, mm -hmm. platform okay one too many okay and in their advertising what were they asking people to do come buy on something. down yeah buy something come yeah. on down mm -hmm. come on down because everybody had you know uh, brick and mortar stores yeah they you know we didn't have internet you know uh, uh e-commerce it was like, come on down to our store. Here's a coupon. Come on down to our store. Here's a sale. Come on down to our store. All right. Uh, we've expanded. Come on down to our store. Okay. Do you see the common connector in all that yes. advertising? It was getting them from wherever to come on down to the store. Yeah. Okay. Now we are in a digital world, okay? Uh, what is our store? Okay. If, if you're a photographer, you have a store. Huh? If you're a photographer, you have a store. Or, or, or you can meet somebody at Hubbard Park or wherever. Okay, know. well, yeah, that's, that's actually, uh, we're going to simplify it a lot more. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. In this digital age, our store is what? Our website. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Why the website? Because the website doesn't move. The mm -hmm. website is it represents your business. The website is the digital equivalent of people walking into your store. Right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all the advertising that we, we put out there 
is no longer newspapers, television, radio, and yellow pages. Okay, they've been replaced by social media. Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, okay? So those are all still one too many advertising, okay? So you have to use all those platforms to request people through your advertising to what? Come on down. Mm -hmm. Come on down to my website. Okay, come on down to my website. All right, except it's gone a little bit more sophisticated. It's not so much come on down to my home page. It's gone a little bit more sophisticated. Come on down to the page I want you to come to. Okay. Okay. All within your website. So if you are advertising one too many for your portrait work, You'll want to lead them to a landing landing page, all about your portraiture. Okay. Now the nice thing about a physical mom and pop shop and a website, the one thing that they both share the same, is uh, what's called organic traffic. And organic traffic is people who just happen to be walking by and seeing your storefront. And that's things like Google search, all right? Uh, uh, or a, um, you know, uh, yeah, pretty much Google search. That's, that's the equivalent of walking down the street and seeing the shop, okay? So, uh, yeah, it's important to to use a lot of different methods of advertising, but it's all bring the people in. So, uh, okay. Anyway, uh, but that's not what we are doing today. Today, we are going to be talking about light. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, some fun lighting effect that we can do in post-production to add a little bit of umph to our images, okay? Now, I'm going to start off with something like super, super simple to kind of give you the foundation. And then we're gonna go into, into something that I think you guys are gonna really, really love, okay? All right. So you guys, you guys know that I, I begin my editing process in Lightroom and end it in Lightroom, okay? Uh, I'm not going to do a lot in Lightroom here simply because what we're going to be doing is pretty much all Photoshop stuff, okay? Because um, uh, what we're going to be getting into is a little bit beyond the capabilities of Lightroom, okay? So whenever, whenever I come across something that Lightroom cannot do, that's when I go ahead and move over to Photoshop, all right? But what I want to do is I want to prepare my file in Lightroom before I bring it over to Photoshop, okay? So in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to bring out some detail in the sky, all right? Um, this was from a photo walk at Yale yeah. University that we did recently with Milford Photo. Um, <clears throat> Milford Photo, uh, if if you're not aware, Max, uh, Milford, oh yeah, actually you do, duh, because that's how you found us. Uh, uh, they do, you know, uh, the occasional uh, workshops and photo walks and fun activities. All right, so uh, this was from a recent one. And as you can see, the sky was a little bit cloudy and overcast, which made it nice in one respect, okay? It makes it nice because the light tends to be fairly even wherever you're photographing, okay? But on the flip side, if you are looking for 
any kind of interesting light or light that has some kind of drama to it, well, it's not going to give you that. All right. So now what we have to do is we have to say, well, we weren't able to get it on the scene. Maybe I can add it in post. And this is where the magic of editing comes into play. Now, before I get into it, I will just dip a toe into some of the ethics of this type of editing, because there are people that say, well, that light wasn't there on the day I took it. I'm not going to add something that wasn't there. All right. And then the flip side to that is, well, it's my image. I can do whatever I want with it. And if I want to create something that's fictional and wasn't there, that's fine. All right. It's entirely up to you. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go somewhere down the middle where I am going to add something that wasn't there, but it's going to be natural looking. So it looks like it could have been there. OK. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, I'm actually going to use one of the presets that we um, that we talked about last last week. And this is the uh, adaptive sky, the adaptive sky uh, presets and the dark drama one. And as you can see, as I hover over you can see what it's doing to that sky. All right. So because it's adaptive means that it's using one of the uh, AI generated masking tools. All right. So in this case, it's it's uh, isolating the sky and uh, doing a little bit of manipulation to bring out the contrast in the sky. OK, and that's pretty much all it's doing. OK. All right. Uh, as with any edit, one of the, th uh, hold on a second, let me just double check. Is my audio still, okay, audio is still good. Okay. Uh, I saw a thing come up on my thing here. I'm like, all right, anyway. Uh, one of the things that I tell people is, you know, if you have an idea what you want to do with your edits, go ahead and just delve into it, okay? But if you have really, you know, I got a, a vague concept, but I really don't know what I want to do, okay? What I tell people is map it out, okay? And one of the first things that I teach you guys is what? Look at your image and ask yourself, what is wrong with this image? What do I not like about this image? Okay. We've already tackled one of them, and that was the kind of blown out sky. All right. But now that I've added a little bit of drama to the sky, there's no drama within the building. The building's kind of like, eh, it's flat lighting. Okay. But if we look at it a little carefully, we can see that even though it's fairly flat, there is direction to our light, okay? And if we look at it, it looks like the light is coming in from this side. So in essence, it's coming from behind this building and this building is now in shadow. OK, now, obviously, because of the exposure choices that I made, I'm able to pull out detail in the shadow area and artificially light it. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to add additional light to this building so that it looks like the light is coming from this direction. So if the sun was out here somewhere, okay, 
I want the light coming over whatever this is, this wall here, and just hitting this part of the building. Okay, so so I want to make it look like there's a wall on the left-hand side, the light's coming over the wall and hitting the top of the building on the right-hand side. Make sense? Okay, so that means I'm actually flipping my light source around. Okay, so remember I said the light is actually somewhere over here and it's coming this way and you can see that it's hitting that top window, all right? It's hitting that, that top window, okay? Fortunately, it's not it's not very contrasty, okay? So that allows me to be able to darken down this, this little facet of the building to match the other part and now light, okay? So now I have a bit of a roadmap, okay? We're going to darken this side and we are going to light this side make sense okay and we want to kind of make it look like the light is just coming over the the wall here so this wall all right this wall here is going to cast a shadow somewhere in the lower part of the face of the building, all right? Where, yeah, that's to be determined. You know, the nice thing is we are inventing the light here so I can literally place the light wherever I want. Make sense? Okay, so that, that in essence is what I want to do here, all right? So I've darkened the sky. Uh, what I might do, is maybe maybe just bring my shadows down a little bit okay why because what i'm going what i'm looking to do is create the base layer or the base foundation for uh for my shadow value all right so I'm setting the shadow value for the shadow parts of the building. Now I could do it in Photoshop, okay? But if I have the opportunity to do it here, why not, okay? Uh, because this is a global adjustment, all right? Global means it's going to affect the entire image. And what I did is I just, I basically just used the shadows all right, so that way it did not do anything with the sky, it didn't even touch the sky, it just touched the shadow parts of the building. All right, so let's go ahead and open it in Photoshop. Control E or Command E will open it. And now we have our foundation. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to invent light, okay? how much light that's to be determined okay now <clears throat> what tools am i going to use all right i should i should probably be asking bob and bill this because they know they should know at this point what what tools should i use should i put them under the gun bob what what tools should i use to add light are you going to use your uh, uh what the hell you call it I'm not a brush elliptical. Or a uh, brush no, we're, we are, we're in, fo uh, uh, we're in Photoshop. We're in live. Find me a brush. What's that? A brush of some sort. Nope. Nope. No well, we, well, yes, we will eventually get there, but we need a, a tool in the layers. We need to add a, a, an adjustment layer in order to add light. So... Yeah. What to, what tool do we use? Do you do you remember? 
Um, no. The the, uh, the tool to make it lighter. I, it's you know, it's, one, it's tool one of is, these. Uh, yeah, the favorite tool is uh, what the hell they call it? The diagonal. Um, yes. Uh, you like to use it all the time. All the time. Oh, uh, yeah. Curves, uh, curves, 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 are right. curves adjust. Curves, curves like adjust. Curves adjust. See, I, I, I gotta, I gotta drill these in. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the curves adjustment. All right. Uh, it's probably one of the most uh, flexible tools in our toolbox. Okay. Oh. And what do we want to do? We want to add light. So I'm just going to put a point somewhere in the middle and I'm going to raise it up. Okay. Or I can say, you know what, let's, let's just take our white point. All right. And raise it up. Okay. Now what's going to happen though, as you can see, it is affecting our sky as well. All right. So we're definitely going to need a mask for all of this. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let's bring the, the, the light up. Bring the shadow down. What I want to do is because we're, we're, we're going to be suggesting natural sunlight, uh, sunlight tends to be a little bit contrasty. So we might need to uh, introduce contrast into our light. Okay. We're going to need to make a selection, all right, of the area that we want to affect, all right? And uh, this is where we now can use a couple of different tools, all right? So the first thing I want to do is uh, set my brightness level, all right? How bright do I want you know, the, the, uh, the, the sunlight on the side of our building to be, okay? It's a global change, all right? But what I want to do is I want to just concentrate on what it's doing to the top part of the building, all right? So as you can see, I put a really heavy curve on this. And because our eyes tend to adjust very, very quickly to the image, if you have a trouble pre-visualizing it or visualizing the effect, simply use this little eyeball here and just toggle off and on, off and on, and ask yourself, is that bright enough? So we can always add more bright, okay? But it's good enough to start. And that's what we're going to do. All right. So I have my mask. But my mask is allowing everything from that curves adjustment to go through. All right. I now want to hide that adjustment. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert our mask. Control or option I. Control for you Mac, uh, PC people and uh, option I for you Mac people. Okay. And now we have a black mask that hides that brightening that I that I did. So now at this point, if I wanted to, I can grab myself a uh, brush, okay? And utilizing uh, my foreground and background color, all right? I'm gonna need uh, white as my foreground color, all right? So you can see here, it's black and white. The letter X on your keyboard toggles between the two, all right? X toggles between these two, all right? I want white as my foreground color. And if I paint, you can see everywhere I paint, we are adding light, okay? All right, so now I have to start making some decisions. Where do I want this light to appear. Well, I definitely want the tops of these buildings. Let me let me move this out of the way, okay? But I don't want to go into the sky because if I go into the sky, it's just going to brighten the sky and it's going to make that terrible, okay? So what I could do is I could go ahead and use a lasso tool all 
all right? And my lasso tool's right up here, and I can, I'll can i choose the polygon tool, okay? And then up in the upper left-hand corner, I wanna make sure that my polygon tool is in the add, all right? So the first one is normal, the second one is add, the third one is subtract, and the fourth one is intersect, okay? We want it in the add. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna pretty much follow the outside. I, mean, I don't need to be too, too careful with this, all right? Because right behind this upper part, we have a very, very almost blown out part of the sky anyway. Uh, so we're not gonna be too terrible with it, okay? All right, and then now what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this decorative cornice here to kind of uh, create a border. I may leave it there. I may bring the light down a little bit further. I don't know yet, okay? Once I have a selection, all right, I can now use the delete key or uh, the alt delete key, okay? And what that's going to do is on the on my mask, it's just going to invert that part of the selection. Okay. All right. Now you could also let me back this up. You could also grab yourself a nice, you know, brown brush, white as your foreground color, and paint it in. Okay. Uh, not too bad if it's a small area, very easy to do. But if it's a, you know, very large area, it's easy to just do the alt delete or option delete. Okay. All right. I got that one down. So I'm going to uh, control D to break out of that. Um, I'm going to go to this tower. Okay. And remember what we said, we want the sun, where is it? We want the sun over here, somewhere over, all right, shining down on these two panels of the tower, okay? Make sense? All right, so I have to make a selection around that. So I'm gonna go back to my, oh, I'm still in my lasso tool, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and just make a very quick selection, come up. All right, there, there, there. And now if I, if I hold, press and hold my Alt or Option key, it will turn into just kind of like a regular lasso tool where I just kind of pen it in, all right? All right, and then once I get back to a straight line, I can release that and go back to making my straight lines. Now, I'm gonna use this section here again, kind of like as my demarcation line. That may change as the lighting process continues, okay? All right, and I'm going to do Alt-Delete, okay? Uh, and then control D. Now, as you can see in this area, I'm getting a little bit of a uh, of a halo, okay? Because now the white of the clouds isn't as bright here as it was over in the other section. So now I can go ahead and find myself a nice soft round brush, make it smaller. Okay, Just make sure that now my foreground color is black. I'm going to hit the X key. All right, make my brush a little smaller and just kind of clean up that edge uh, a little bit just to kind of remove that, that little bit of a halo. Okay, and if I want, I can reintroduce some shadows, all right? If I find that, you know, there should be some shadows here, 
I can also go ahead and paint in some of those shadows. Okay. Because now I'm working up fairly, fairly close to my subject. All right. So I can reintroduce all these little shadows that should be there. Okay. All right. Maybe I want to introduce some shadow here. Press and hold click here. Click, press and hold shift, click. There we go. All right. Clean this up a little bit. All right. So I'm just being artistic here. All right while i am fairly close up okay so now look at it if we have the eyeball before after before after now we're trying to see a little bit of more dramatic light happening all right okay we're gonna go to this central part here uh, i definitely know i want to do something here okay so again i'm gonna find my lasso tool click i'm just gonna click all the way around i can hold my, uh, my hand around and again, i'll just right here to the top of this right here, on this side here and, and alt or option delete why did that work? In fact, I changed my foreground background color. Previously, white foreground color. Now I changed it, so just regular delete will take care of it. Okay? So you gotta, that's tricky. It's a while to understand that. It depends on what your foreground color is in relation to your mask. Okay? If the foreground color is opposite of your mask, you can use the alt delete. If the foreground color is the same as your mask and the background color is the opposite, then just use the delete. It's a little tricky, but I do go. So now we're trying to get somewhere, right? We're trying to get somewhere. And you know what? I might even brighten this up a little more. There we go. Okay? But it looks a little strange because it's a cut off at our heads. It's based on the 3D aspect. Of our subject. Okay, now let's start looking at this uh, architecturally, right? So we know we have our sun coming in this way. We take care of the easy parts, which is the, the top here, top here, and top here, which is on my screen, okay? But obviously, you know, we need that light to travel down. How far down? Well, who knows, okay? And uh, we have to kind of figure out where in the, in the in this imaginary world is our sun. So now when the sun is somewhere way over here, okay, this section of the tower might be casting some shadows here, right? Okay, so I mean, this part of the tower will have some light. So I think if I have if we use kind of like this section corner here and say, all right, this here is going to be my cast shadow, all right? That means that I'm going to like this part. But also, we have this wall here that's casting a shadow. So maybe I want that wall to be casting a shadow maybe somewhere around here so that the light travels down. The light travels down. And, of course, we'll have the light travel down here somewhere, okay? okay. As I make these decisions, I'm venting, but I'm getting cues from the actual image. All right. I'm going to uh, add some light here. Nose. Uh, at this point, I'm facing this section already has uh, uh, white and mask. This section had black and mask. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete. Oops. Make sure I'm on my, I'm on my mask. Gotta make sure you're on the mask. See the white, white border. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna delete. All right. And it's okay. Some people. Let me back that up. Some people say, well, I have a black mask there. If I invert it with Control Command I, okay, then I'm going to have a white mask, which is a perfectly good technique. Except if there's any white, it's going to invert it. Okay. So you see, I've added the shadow back in part of the mask. So be careful what tool you use. Right. We're just gonna use the delete key to just add stuff. Control D. And I'm a bit of a halo here because of my mask. I'll go ahead and bring my brush back. Black is my foreground color, and I'm just going to up those edges a little bit. All right. There is some natural. Oops. And if you mistake, just invert your foreground and background color and paint back in direction. Okay. And I'm just going to flip, shift, you know. All right. All right. Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. All right. I want, to, I want to bring some of that light down onto here, kind of a little bit of an angle to replicate the cast shadow of the wall. And here, I'm going to come back to last tool. I'm going to go only raise it down a little bit, an angle, come down, more of an angle, and up. And go ahead and be back. Like, I'm going to raise the background, I'm just going to delete, control, and just leave this area here. The lasso tool. Okay. All right. Real, okay. So one thing that I could probably do is I can double click on the and because I'm do it now because we have light to build up. Okay. So the other is add a slash tool. Okay. If you look, you see that my feather is at two pixels. I don't increase that. You know, six, twelve, twenty pixels. All right. There's that that soft edge. But I not a number of this. So I'm going to go ahead and oh, you know what? Let's get. I have to remove some here. All right. So I'm going to do a chunk. Okay. Alt D. So the black panel from this part here, and I'm going to make an arbitrary angle. Right. Back to the arbitrary. Because I already established one angle here. Okay. And one angle here. So I'm going to put a point here. I'm going to do an angle. Come up here. And close off. The key has my lights. So we can go ahead and in here. Maybe the angle is more kind of like that. Control zero. Right. And I want that. Yeah, I'm going to fix that right now. So on your mask, okay, what I'm going to do is going to double click, raise our mask tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to maybe feather. There's six, there's 16, 15. All right. Nice touch. Say OK. It's not as hard. I'm going to get myself I'm going to size it up so it's all this. I'm going to go escape. What I'm going to do is on opacity, I'm going to be 100%. I want to be maybe like 20%. Right? I'm going to take some shadow. It's still right. So I'm going to get it. But remember, the sun's coming in from above. This is at an angle, so it's going to be casting a bit of a shadow. Right. That's what we might Now we just need to go back to my, uh, my, um, let's do this a little. Okay. I'm going to make a selection of that panel. Okay. Just a panel. I need dark or enough. Right. Let's see. I have to look for that. Okay. All right. Now I have a section. What I'm going to do is I want to copy this. So what I'm going to find out is another one of my curves adjustments. Because I have a selection already made when I click on my curves adjustment. It's going to give me a mask automatically. Right. So at this point, what I'm going to do is say, hey, I'm going to darken it down. Right. But actually, what I want to do is I want to bring my white point down and darken it. And I want to darken it so that this panel matches the luminosity of its neighbor. Okay. Or maybe just darker. Okay. Now, this is on now the newly created shadow side. Okay. That looks pretty darn good to me. Okay. 
and below, right, and now, before and after, before and after, okay?
definitely, definitely adds a little bit more drama. Okay. Any questions with what I've done here? All right. Now, this is an exercise in, in kind of visualizing where shadows should go. It's a great ability either uh, inventing light like we're doing here or if you are accenting and adding to existing light. So it's this is a great, great, um, uh, what you would call it, um, exercise to get into, okay? All right. Let's go back to Lightroom. All right. Actually, let me go ahead and save that. When I save it, it's going to bring that back into Lightroom. And there is our edited product. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get into something a little bit more fun. We're going to step away from that, that fairly simple um, adding light. And we're going to get into something that is a little bit more complex. All right. So for that, I have this image and this image. Uh, okay. And uh, the one thing that they both share is they both have light coming through trees, which now creates a dappled light, dappled light. Okay. And what I want to do is recreate like light rays coming through these little patches of light through the tree leaves. All right. So we can definitely see it in this first image here. All these little areas of white here, this light coming through, all of this little bit here, definitely a, a lot going on down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's the pinpoints of light that is going to give us the that that streak of rays coming through the for the the tree tops. All right. You've seen them before, all right? They're very difficult to photograph on their own. You need a lot of atmosphere uh, in the air, uh, uh, you know, uh, dust or, um, f you know, fog or something that really kind of catches the light in midair, okay? Um, that's why photographers love smoke machines, all right, or foggers, okay? Fog in a can. It's great for adding atmosphere. All right. But in this case, we're going to add it uh, artificially. All right. And now, so if we look at this image, again, the sky was very overcast. So you can see that the light on this statue is really not very contrasty which is okay. I don't mind that it's not as contrasty. We can add contrast to it uh, uh, later, okay? We can control the amount of contrast rather than when you are in a scene that already has a high contrast uh, light, you can't dial that down. Hard sunlight creating hard shadows the only way to control those hard shadows is have some kind of light coming in to light the shadow side of your subject. This here, the light is a little bit more even, so we can actually add contrast. All right, so that's a that's a benefit of, of photographing in this kind of light. Okay, all right. And uh, so now as we look at it, we can see that overall it's kind of blah, very uninteresting photograph, okay? So if we want to create, if we want to add interest, 
let's add it with some kind of atmospheric light. Okay. The second image is this one. Uh, this was taken on the same day, just a little bit later in the day. So you can see that the sky again is very overcast, uh, very even light. But what I found was in this particular uh, viewpoint, this tree, one was a brighter uh, yellowy green than its surrounding trees. Uh, it's a newer tree, so probably recently planted. Uh, and it's kind of sitting in this pool of light, all right? Because if you, if you look at the ground, all right, you can see that pool of light out there, all right? Here, it's all dark, all right? And out here, it's nice and light, okay? And that's because of the canopy of trees was creating this kind of like very large shaft of light that really illuminated this tree and i thought that was so cool i found myself at a little vantage point where i could you know frame it between those two uh, uh large monuments and create a frame within a frame you know but overall it's not very interesting. So maybe we can create some kind of atmospheric interest. All right. So that's the goal for both of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to add sun rays. Okay. So, uh, all right. For this image, let me go to the develop section. The only thing I did with this image is I cooled it off. I brought the uh, my color balance uh, temperature down, okay, to cool it off. Not too much. I didn't want to, you know, make it uh, overly blue, all right, but I just put in 52K, all right, so I still get that warmth. And the second one the only thing I did for this one is I added a radial, uh, uh, a radial gradient. So Bob was right. It's one of my favorites uh, in Lightroom for adding, uh, you know, a touch of, of brightness. Uh, and as you can see, I just kind of kept it around that tree just to make that light pop a little bit more. All right. So if I turn that off. All right, you can see that it does brighten it, but not a lot. So I'm just taking what's there and enhancing it a little bit more. Make sense? Okay. And what that does is it increases the contrast between my subject and its surroundings. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and select those two. Control E from Lightroom, we'll send those two to Photoshop, okay? And here I have image number one and image number two with my Lightroom edits already added, okay? All right, let's tackle this guy, all right? Now, I'm gonna walk you uh, through the process, all right? But this is such an easy process that you can turn it into a action, all right, that will, will set the, the presence for this, all right? But there's a lot of manipulation, so you can't rely on the action alone to give you the end results. There's gonna be a lot of manipulation of the settings in order to get the look that you want, and I'll explain that as we go along, okay? All right. So what do we need? We need rays of light coming through the trees, okay? Now, of course, one of the things we could do uh, is we can create a curves adjustment. We can, you know, make it very bright, uh, invert our mask, uh, take our brush and then just kind of like 
Oh, let's go to 100% here. And I can paint some light streaks, right? But this does not look natural. All right, that looks like really, really bad, right? So we're not going to use this process. All right. We're going to use uh, uh, something that uh, I learned, you know, uh, I learned this a while back, but never put it into, you know, regular application. Uh, we're going to use uh, a gradient, believe it or not, to create our sun rays. All right. So the first thing we do is we go down to our uh, uh, layer adjustment menu, which is this little round circle with the half dark, half light. Okay. Click on that. It brings up this context menu. And the second one down is gradient. Gradient. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And it's, it's going to bring up this dialog box. Okay. This is where part of the magic uh, resides, and it's the start of our gradients or our, our light streaks. All right. Now, a gradient, all it does is it says, okay, I'm going to apply across the board uh, a, a gradient that goes from one color. All right, so if we look at it, my default one here that it opened up, we have black here. And then on this side, we have white, okay? And if you look here, well, first of all, uh, actually, if we look here, we see that the angle is 90 degrees. So if we look at our image, we have black here and the gradient goes up to white okay so what that's doing is it's darkening the bottom and it's gradually getting lighter as we go up okay this is a typical gradient all right and of course you can change the color of your gradient you can add uh additional uh, points to your gradient, all right? Uh, you can change, you know, the colors and all the good stuff, okay? But we're going to do something a little bit out of the ordinary, all right? All right, so the, the first thing we want to do is I want you to keep in mind this part Okay, and this part, all right? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change from linear, all right? So linear starts in one end and it goes across uh, to the other, all right? And we're gonna change it to angle, okay? And angle, if you look, does something a little strange. What it actually does is it creates a circular, gradient that starts at a point, all right, and it travels around. So you can see that it's black here, and it travels around until it gets to white here, okay? Now, what this is doing is it's, it's making it, our gradient, into a circle that literally emanates from a central point okay so now if we look at it here is the most obvious because we see a demarcation between black and white okay but it literally radiates outward with our tonality okay so here on this side is 100 percent black this is, you know, 90% black. This is, you know, 85% uh, black and all the way around, okay? And it's that same value 
radiating out from the center. Make sense? Okay, we're gonna use that to our advantage. But the way we're gonna do it is we are going to create noise instead of creating uh, values, okay? And for that, we need to double click on our gradient bar, okay? When we double click on that, it brings up this dialog box. This is our gradient editor, all right? And this is the one that allows you to change colors if you want, okay? But that's not what we're going to do. We're going to change it, and this part where it says type, see where it says solid, all right? We're going to change it from solid to noise. And now, all of a sudden, you can see that it's it's adding a, a bunch of noise across the board, all right? In this case, the noise has color to it, but you can see how it radiates from that central point outward, right? Hopefully, now you get the gist of how we're going to start creating our light rays. Because now you can see that there are sections of light and dark and light and dark and so forth. But we have color. So we need to remove the color. All right. And to do that, we're going to do it right within this editor. All right. And we go down to the bottom. We have our color model. All right. Currently, it's set to RGB. That means we can change the RGB values, all right, and kind of give us whatever whatever we want, all right? We can make it bluer, we can make it greener, we can make it more yellow, the whole nine yards, but that's not what we want. So we're gonna change this from RGB to hue, saturation, and brightness, HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness, okay? And it changes our sliders now to the hue, all right? And, of course, if we wanted to, we can change, you know, our, our hue here. But we don't want the hue. We want to remove hue. So we're going to take our saturation, and we're going to just desaturate it, okay? Desaturate it. All right, and... Now, the thing that you're going to notice is that as we remove the color, we're now seeing the rays in terms of light and shadow, all right? And you can see that pretty much like this whole half is very, very bright, all right? Not very good for streaks. So we need to change that. And for that, we're going to utilize this little randomize button, all right? And it's going to take some playing around with, all right? Actually, that looks pretty good, okay? Because we have a lot of distribution of, of light and dark, light and dark, all right? But you just play around until you find some. Here's one, okay, that we can probably use, okay? So I, I like that. I'm going to click OK. All right. Now, we're not going to use it just yet, but it will come into play. And that is the angle. The angle. All right. So our angle right now is 90 degrees. And what that does is it puts our starting point. All right. So we have our start here. It goes around this way and it ends here. Right. So our start end point is north and south, okay? If we change that, okay, so if we do 360, right, it puts that start and end point down here. See how it just kind of rotates it? All right, so that means we can take a section that is ideal and we can control where it's going to go all right and let's see oops grabbed the wrong one there we go all right 
keep that in mind. All right. We close that out. All right. Now, this gradient is hiding everything below. We need to change the blend mode. All right. So we're going to go from normal to screen mode. Screen mode. Okay. And what that does is it allows anything from 50% gray to white become brighter, okay? And anything from 50% gray to black go to the exposure of the image, all right? So it doesn't get darker, it just loses brightness until it matches the exposure of our underlying layer. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So we're using shades of gray to control the amount of brightness. So a black is absolutely no brightness and white is a lot of brightness. Okay. All right. But you can see that it's, it's, yeah, it's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, so what can we do? All right. Oop. I duplicated it. What can we do? What can we do is increase the contrast of our rays. All right. So for that, all right, <laughs> I'm going to shock you guys. All right. We can probably use curves. Okay. But there's actually something that's a little bit easier to use for this process than our curves adjustment, and that's our levels adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and create a levels adjustment. Okay. But I want the levels adjustment to affect only the gradient layer, not the image layer underneath. So for that, I need to pin. All right, I need to clip this layer to the layer below, and that's this button right here. Okay, and when I do that, you're going to notice that it there's a little down arrow. It clips it. So anything I do to my levels adjustment only applies to the gradient layer. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to bring my black point in. Okay. And you notice that everything that was kind of like on the darker side of gray has now become so dark that it's allowing the underlying image to come through. Okay. So by manipulating these, what I want to do is I want to really accent the rays. Okay. I want very distinct. Oh, what the hell happened? I want very distinct rays. Okay. All right. And it takes a little, little playing around. Okay. Actually, that's not looking too, too bad. Okay. But now we need to position them a little bit better. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here. All right. And now when I have my gradient fill uh, uh, dialog box open, I can go to the image and now I can move this gradient around. Okay. All right. But before I do that, what I want to do is I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room on my artboard here because I want to be able to drag this off the image. And now I'm getting a little bit more of directionality to these rays. Now they're starting to look like actual rays coming from the sun. Make sense? Okay. So now I have to start making some artistic choices. What direction do I want my rays to come in from? Do I want them, you know, coming in the direction going against my subject? 
or do I want them to come in with the subject? Okay. This is a personal choice. It's entirely up to you, but just understand that there is a certain psychology to how light is directed towards a subject. Okay. If the subject and the light are traveling both in the same direction, there's a sort of tranquility uh, happening in the scene. If the subject and the light are going against each other, all right, it creates a little bit more chaos and drama, and it's not as tranquil, all right? So I want you to, to keeping what I just said in mind, I want you to take a look how this compares to, oops, compares to this, okay? I, I know it's a, probably a little bit harder to see, okay? But see how this creates conflict while this one tends to be a little bit more calmer okay i kind of like the calm because it fits the mood of the statue the statue is very pensive uh you know um he's kind of like overlooking the quad there so i like this idea okay all right so i've placed my my rays i can fine tune it if i need to change the angle all right, I can use this inner one here to kind of turn things, all right? But that can, you know, it's a little awkward, all right? So what I find it's easier if I just go, oops, right into here and then just use the, the up, down, all right, uh, arrow keys. Let's see. Let's start off at 45. Come on. 45. What the heck? 45. All right. And then if I want to, uh, let's see, can I go up? I I know there's a way of doing it uh, by tens. I can't remember how it goes now. Okay, but anyway. So you have the ability to change the angles here. Okay. I kind of like that. Maybe a little bit lower. Okay. Hit OK. All right. Bring this back up. OK. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I it's right now it's white. I want to give this uh, a little bit of color. All right. So how do we do that? We're going to introduce a hue saturation layer. OK, hue and saturation. And within the hue saturation, we have the colorize, colorize. So we're going to click on that. And up in our hue section, all right, we're just going to bring that over until we have a nice warm tone. Okay. And if we want, we can add a little bit more brightness. Okay. All right, and we don't want it affecting the entire image. Again, we want to just affect the rays. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and our clipping layer, we're just going to clip it to the underlying uh, gradient. Okay. All right. So now we get to a little bit of uh manipulation okay now 
remember we changed from normal this is what normal looks like to screen mode all right the screen mode allows anything that's dark to disappear all right and the underlying come through all right so here is where i might want to now that i've added a little bit of color i might want to bring my black point down okay add a little bit of more contrast all right there we go oops come on all right there we go okay change that back to screen mode so you can see oops what the heck did i do oh <laughs> that's what i did i changed the wrong one to screen mode got to make sure you're always pay attention to your layers Pay attention to your layers. It's the gradient layer we need to change back to screen mode, okay? All right. If that is not enough, we can always brighten up, all right? And the other thing we can do is double click on our gradient and we can use our blend if. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to use it on the current layer. So anything in the current layer that is dark, we want to make it go away. So that's this part right here. And you can see how it makes the, the rays kind of disappear. We're going to press and hold the Alt or Option key. It splits this, and we're able to now create a little bit more contrast in our rays. All right. Told you it's a little complicated, okay? I'm gonna come back out here and maybe bring this here. That looks a little better, say okay. All right, so now we have one final problem to deal with. The rays are going in front of our subject. I want those to go behind, okay? So now what we can do is on our gradient layer we have a mask so make sure the mask is selected okay i'm going to go up here to our subject aware uh, selection and i'm going to go ahead and click on that it's going to build a selection around our statue okay once our selection is there, I can go to my mask and alt delete or no, nope, sorry, delete and we get our mask. Okay. Control D removes it. And now we have the light rays traveling behind. Okay. And if we want, we can control the intensity just by using the opacity, okay? All right, and I think eh, probably about 70%. That looks pretty good, okay? All right, but now it looks like our statue is cookie cutter pasted into our scene. We need to increase a little bit of contrast on our statue all right remember what i said earlier it's easier to add contrast than to remove the contrast okay so we already have a mask that's going to help us uh, as we come in uh, later all right so what do we want to do my favorite let's go to the top of the stack okay I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer, all right? But this time, I do not want to pin it to the gradient layer, all right? Because 
I want to affect the statue. All right. What do I want to do? I want to take, oops, let's get out of the masking tool. I want to take all these existing highlights that are on our statue and I want to make them brighter. So on our curves adjustment, I'm going to take my white point and I'm going to start dragging it across like that. Okay. Um, and I'm really pushing it because, all right, again, keep in mind, it's going to be a global effect. I'm going to change it to a local effect, but I need to keep in mind what's what it's doing in relation to our background. So our background, we have those nice, very bright areas of light coming through. I want that to kind of match. So I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it pretty hard. All right. But I want my shadows to remain in shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that down. OK, and you can see now we're introducing contrast into our statue. OK, and what we want to do is make it just for the statue and not everything else. As you can see, it's hitting everything. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the mask here. All right. And pressing hall alt or option, I'm going to drag it up to the mask area of our new layer okay which now masks out what i just did and we're going to invert it control command i inverts it okay and now you can see what it does okay oh control i I inverted the wrong one. See what happens? There we go. All right. Now we can make some minor adjustments. If you find that, you know, it's a little bit too contrasty, uh, let's bring the contrast down however way you want to do it. Okay. All right. Why isn't... There we go. For after, before, after. So now it looks like a, the light is coming in behind the statue and it is actually hitting the statue. So we've created light by one, making something up with the light rays and two enhancing something that's already there in order to add to the effect all right how are we doing for time we're almost done all right any questions on on this okay no. all right i'm going to repeat the process i'm going to do it one more time except i'm not going to explain explain the fine details of every step. I'm just going to go through every step at uh, in, in quick succession. So that way, when you come back, and you want to follow this, just skip to this section. Okay. All right. So you have your base image. You're ready to go. First thing you're going to do, create a gradient layer. Okay. In the gradient layer, you're going to change from style which is linear, you're going to change it from linear to angle. Okay. And again, we get that radial feel to this. All right. Double click on the gradient. It's going to bring you the gradient editor. Okay. We will now switch from solid where it says type. We're going to switch from solid to noise. OK, we're going to drop down a little bit lower and we're going to go from RGB to HSB, which is hue, saturation and brightness. And we're going to bring that saturation layer or a, a slider all the way down. OK, now 
Here's where you start paying attention to the types of rays. If you don't like what's happening, I'm, I'm not too crazy about all that brightness there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the randomize. All right. And you can always revisit this later. Okay. Until you find something that has, there we go, fairly even all the way around. We got some good sections here that might be, you know, useful. All right. Remember, we're going to add some contrast. So we get OK, OK, change from normal to screen. OK, now we come down and we're going to add a uh, levels adjustment. OK, we're going to bring our black point up. We're going to bring our white point down, okay? And all we're doing is we're creating a little bit of contrast in those rays, all right? And you can see them, you know, down here, okay? All right. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Oh, make sure that uh, I almost forgot a step. See that? Make sure that your clipping path, our clipping uh, mask is clipped to that gradient, okay? To that gradient, all right. I'm gonna double click, bring up my gradient fill. I'm going to go ahead and move this around. And I kind of like the idea of the, the light rays coming, you know, pretty much straight down into the scene, okay? That looks good. I might want to change the angle, maybe, maybe. Oh, come on. I wish they'd make this tool a little bit more friendly to use. Nope, that's not good. All right, that, that looks good right there, okay? Hit OK. Control zero. All right, uh, bring that white point down, make it a little bit brighter. There we go. Make that a little bit more contrasty. There we go, okay. Gonna add a hue saturation layer, clip it, colorize, and I'm just going to warm up those rays. Make them a little bit more yellow. All right, if I if I want to, I can brighten. Remember, it's going to brighten everything up, so you got to be careful. Okay, hit OK. I'm going to come back down to my gradient. All right, I'm gonna come to the the area outside of you know where the label is, and if I double click there, it brings up my layer style, and I'm looking in particular to my blend if the current layer, I'm gonna come here. All right, and I want to split this, so Alt or Option splits that, and I'm gonna take it until my rays become very, very distinct. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then on that mask, so I'm going to go to my mask, make sure that the white frame is around the mask. I'm going to take a brush, nice soft round brush going to make this a little bit larger okay make sure that your foreground color is black x will toggle between the two all right and i'm just going to mask all this out from the foreground areas all right because i don't want that on any of this okay and just like that I have my sun rays, all right? 
And of course, at this point, if I want to, I can go back and see if I can finagle the angle a little bit more. Twenty. Let's try thirty. Well, oh, that's not. What is going on with my keyboard? It's adding stuff. Okay, thirty. Let's try. My keyboard's going wanky. Forty. Oh, that looks pretty good. We'll do okay. Come back to the mask. Lock that out. There's Sarius. I missed. I can see it. All right. If you want to check your mask, Alt or Option. Oh. I wasn't even on my mask. Look at that. If you want to check your ma mask, Alt or Option, click on your mask. And it's going to allow you to visualize your mask. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now, now I could probably do something a little bit more with the uh, with the rays, all right. But you get the gist of it, right? I can always come back, double click here, hit the randomize. Ooh, ooh, kind of like that. All right. Let's uh, let's change the angle a little bit. Come on. I like the one that was just to the left of the tray. Personal yeah. opinion. Oh. Just personal opinion. 28. 20. I don't know why my keyboard is is adding stuff. It's really weird. Or is it my pen? And back. Hmm. No. 20, 30, there we go. Okay. All right. And then here, what I might do is I might expand my brush, give myself a nice big brush. Okay. I'm going to go up here to my opacity and give it uh, maybe 20%. Okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. Black is my foreground and oh, maybe 10%. And then just kind of let's try 5%. Okay. There we go. So it looks like it's just kind of falling off there. Okay. That looks. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, that's how you add a little bit of interest. And of course, you know what? Maybe I might uh, bring the opacity down. Oops. Oh, that's why. Okay, there we go. I was, again, on the wrong... There we go. And then bring the opacity down 70, 65. Okay. All right. So there is a little bit of randomness, uh, but you can see that, you know, there, there's a, a lot of things that you can control the angle, the point of huh. origin, um, the spread, uh, and the uh, intensity of your light rays. Okay. All right. Any questions? I know it was a lot to cover, uh, as always. <laughs> but uh, my, hopefully that gives my, you some My ADD brain gets the idea, the very specifics. I got to work on it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you you know, this this technique doesn't work across the board on every image. It's very specific types of images. Okay, but you can see how it adds a little bit of, of interest to mm -hmm. a kind of mm -hmm. otherwise blah 
yeah uh, you know nature photograph right? yeah I, I thought of a picture i took a year ago no 10 years ago this was when we had the mid connecticut group on meetup we took a trip to boston and i took a picture at northeastern university of uh, was almost like reminds me of the statue thing reminded me of it of uh of Cy Young, picture of Cy Young. Uh, uh, Cy Young was a, a baseball yeah. picture. Okay, yeah. I, I, uh, if I could have done something with that, I'm going to send it to you in case you in case you want to use it for a lesson. Well, you know some of those hiking photos that you take. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. You know, some of those backgrounds can be a little bit, eh. Yeah, there yeah, you know. I know. There I you know. go. Drop some some light streaks behind everybody. Oh, if these if these people want it for them, they're gonna have to pay me. Nah. <laughs> I ain't oh, doing that. No. Yeah, yeah, no. You, you, <laughs> here, here you go. You do one. Yes. You show them. Oh, and okay. Go, Ooh. Okay. And then you sell them. Okay. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Any questions on anything we covered? Max, welcome. Oh, thank you. Where do you live, Max? Uh, I'm in Sherman, Sherman, Connecticut. Okay, oh. know where that is. Yeah. The highest peak in Connecticut is in Sherman, if I'm if I have that correct. Uh, is that um, Talbot Mountain is the highest peak, isn't it? Talcott, I thought somebody said Sherman, something in the in the northwest corner. And I thought it was Sherman. I not that I know of. Yeah. Okay. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> uh, the shadow knows. Yeah. Only the shadow knows. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, absolutely. Welcome, Max. Uh hopefully you'll uh stay on with us, you know. Oh um, yeah. So next week uh, all right, so I do this the first three Mondays of the month. Mm -hmm. The first Mondays is Lightroom, second Monday's Photoshop. The third Monday is general photography. Uh, you know, you got okay. a question about anything, hit me up. I'll hopefully okay. I'll have an answer for you. Okay. Okay. So, um, and that's it. And oh, thank you. I will see you. Well, actually, you 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 said you were showing interest in maybe coming out Saturday. Oh, definitely. If that's uh, the fifteenth. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Oh, 15th, oh, 15th. you mean for the workshop? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, thirteenth for the workshop, and yeah. then I got a one-on-one -on -one with you here in my studio. So yes, okay. yes, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, any questions? Bill, anything? No question. No question. Oh, no, my brain's fried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did my job right. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, I'm fried too. I'm I, I'm a little cheap when it comes to air conditioning, and it's like it's we're in a heat spell <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely max any questions about anything we covered um no thank you okay uh on a difficulty level how do you rate this in regards to your skill set um well i don't have i don't have lightroom or photoshop oh what do you I, use to i edit? have capture one Okay. Yeah. Ca Capture one. Eh, it's a little bit limited. So. Yeah. It is after watching this. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, there, you know, okay. So currently, you know, there's a big debate about what uh, uh, Adobe is doing with their, you know, programs yeah. and and uh accessibility and and taking care of protecting people's you know uh you know um data yeah. a lot of controversy all right uh a lot of people are jumping ship and yes. there's a lot of people that said no f, f you adobe i'm mm -hmm. i'm not buying your products there mm -hmm. are other products out there i use affinity products uh, a mm -hmm. lot in my work uh, not so much for photo editing, but I do a lot of digital art and a lot mm. of vector art. So I use Affinity mm. products for that simply because I hate Adobe's vector illustration program. Mm. 
Okay. Um, so there are alternatives. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, there's also GIMP, which is open source. You can download it and use it free of charge. Doesn't have mm -hmm. all the nice bells and whistles and the AI features that Photoshop does. But what you'll find is a lot of the same tools that are used in Photoshop can be replicated in GIMP and yeah. Affinity Photo or Corel Photo or some of these other, you know, higher end photo editing programs. Mm. Anything that that works with layers. OK, okay. so uh, don't feel that, you know, just because I'm teaching Photoshop. Yeah you have to get into Photoshop. The only reason I do Photoshop is because that's pretty much been the industry standard for 20, 30 odd years. All right. Yes. Um, the the reason, why, reason why I do Photoshop, and this is important if you join a camera club, mm. is most people that I know use Photoshop. So if you wanna know how to do something, uh, Photoshop, most if, um, you'll get more help mm -hmm. from Photoshop than anything else. Uh, how far are you from Simsbury? Uh, are you close to Simsbury? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, uh, there's there's a there's a camera club in Danbury. I think it's called Candlewood Camera Club. Okay. I'm yeah, I'm close to Danbury. Yep. Okay, Candlewood Camera Club. Yes. Uh, if you want to go to Newtown, there's Flagpole Camera Club. Okay. I belong to North Haven. Okay. Yeah, there's there's a, a few mm. camera clubs. Uh, Candlewood Camera Club is probably close to you. Mm. Um, and And a few others, so. But yeah, anyway, thank you. Um, but, but anyway, uh, okay. If there are no more questions, uh, thank you once again for joining me. Uh, thank we will you, see you next there Monday. You Stay. Oh, close. thank you. It's nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you, Absolutely. Matt. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank Take you. care, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching Learning Photography with Duck. Brought to you in association with Milford Photo your local full-service camera store. Located in downtown Milford, Connecticut, Milford Photo offers you a personalized shopping experience. From the latest camera gear to printing and framing services. And, of course, educational workshops to teach you the finer aspects of photography. Don't forget to tell them Duck sent you.